everyone myself ajit and i'm here to present our work title cyanfl efficient and robust secure quantized aggregation so this is a collaborative work under the umbrella of private ai institute where i work with researchers from vmware barilan definity and crypto at tu darmstadt and royal holloway university of london so coming to motivation we uh, basically focus on this problem of federated learning so in a classical setting of federated learning with uh, one server what happens is the server has a global model that it wants to refine in every iteration using the data of some of the available clients so it chooses a subset of the clients and sends the global model to these clients so these clients will locally train their model uh, locally train this global model using their local data and sends it back to the aggregation server and at the aggregation server it aggregates this model using some standard aggregation mechanisms for instance consider the simple federated averaging now in this scenario like let's consider uh, some weak devices by weak devices i mean like some mobile devices and uh, consider the scenario where the model is like quite large for instance recently these llms and all are having like millions of parameters so in this situation there are mainly like two problems first one this model being very large so every iteration these participants has to communicate their model which is like millions of parameters back to this aggregation server and second is even though initially it was perceived that this federated learning paradigm where the aggregation server is seeing not the data but this uh, locally trained model will leak no information regarding the model but later studies show that actually if you see the locally trained model individually from each client it can leak data so we need to protect against this kind of leakage so these are the two things uh, that uh, we will be tackling in this work so for the first one is quantization schemes that tackles this issue of this huge communication from the client side to the server so there are these schemes which basically compresses this local model into like some small bit stream of data and that will be communicated to the server for aggregation now regarding the case of this server learning this local data by seeing this individual updates we have schemes called secure aggregation that basically prevents the server from seeing this individual models in the clear but rather it will directly see the aggregated model so to summarize secure aggregation is used to provide privacy for the individual model updates and quantization schemes basically compress the parameter updates for resource efficiency and a third concern is regarding the case of malicious clients so by malicious clients we in this work we consider the clients who try to hamper this process by uh, like providing some wrong or like bad model which will basically reduce the overall accuracy of the global model that is getting trained so we basically tackle these three problems in this work so you can kind of think like okay this is a marriage between secure aggregation and uh, quantization schemes with additional support for malicious clients to summarize the contributions of our work there are mainly four contributions so the first one is we want to ensure minimal client communication what i meant is uh, so in the privacy free setting where we have this quantized uh, setting in place the clients are communicating communicating some amount of information to the servers so we want to ensure privacy in this setting and try to have the communication of the client as close to this privacy free setting so that is what we want to achieve and we could achieve almost optimal communication in this setting whereas uh, where in our work what we show is the client has to communicate the same amount of information that it is communicating in a privacy free setting but at the same time we can ensure privacy so that is the first contribution second one is from the aggregator uh, server side usually uh, we use uh, uh, secure multiparty computation techniques which i will explain in the uh, like coming slides so there it involves communication among the servers to aggregate and we what we want to Uh, do is minimize this amount of communication among the servers this is not the communication between clients and server like this is the communication among the servers and for that what we figured out is we can do some amount of approximation in this aggregation which will result in unbiased aggregation itself 
and that can significantly reduce the overall communication required among the servers. And we provided a benchmarking framework, which is uh, written in PyTorch and supports uh, GPU acceleration to evaluate our methods. And to tackle this malicious clients, we also propose a defense mechanism that can tackle this untargeted poisoning attacks in this context setting. Coming to our system, as I mentioned, our system uh, consists of not just one aggregator server. So this black box is the aggregation server. It has three aggregation servers, which can be generalized to N. And we use this uh, technique called secure multi-party computation, or in short, MPC, where multiple servers can jointly compute whatever a single aggregator is doing. So for instance, if it is Fed, Fed average, it will these three servers together will be computing this Fed average such that no individual server has complete information about this average. They will perform the computation and at the end of the computation, they will have something called shares corresponding to the aggregated result. And we support linear one bit quantization schemes. So by linear, what we mean the, uh, meant is like in this quantization schemes, uh, there will be some algorithm applied to each of these local models to quantize the schemes. So if you aggregate these local models, in terms of this quantized one, it will be equivalent to like the uh, non-quantized version of the aggregated model. Second is uh, what I mentioned, we have a approximate bit conversion method because we consider one bit quantization. So that means the model will be converted to a array of bit streams and some values. So each of this bit stream, uh, in this bit stream, each of these bits will be communicated to these three servers. So what we do is we have a mechanism where you can convert these bits which are shared in as per this Boolean sharing, which I'll talk in a bit, to its equivalent arithmetic sharing that is required for the aggregation. So we have an approximate bit conversion method. And we use this uh, technique uh, called SEPAG, which is separate aggregation from this work called uh, BAT20. And we use that to basically uh, further optimize the communication cost. So the communication is optimized in a sequence of steps. First, we take the actual one, then we apply one technique, followed by the next technique, and eventually we get the optimal uh, communication among the servers. And uh, from an MPC perspective, we consider semi-honest adversaries. So semi-honest corruption among the servers means the servers will follow the protocol, but at the same time, they are curious and tries to learn more from the interactions that are happening. But uh, we didn't consider the strong or malicious setting where the servers can arbitrarily deviate from the protocol. And uh, we support dishonest majority MPC setting. So by dishonest majority, it means among these three servers, even if two are corrupt, the privacy of the scheme is still retained. If all are corrupt, obviously there is no privacy of the aggregated model. But if, uh, as long as in general speaking, if you have N servers, even if N minus one servers collude together, the privacy of the model is still retained. To achieve this minimal client communication, what we did from the MPC perspective is we used this uh, idea of mass devaluation. So basically here, B, bit, bit, bit is represented as B and it will have two components. One is the mask, which is the lambda B and one is the mass value, which is the MB. So basically every bit you can think of is represented as a collection of two bits. If you XOR them, you will get the resulting bit. And this is needed from the multi-party computation point of view. So the amount of information available from the servers are as follows. This bit MB will be same and is available with all the computing servers. And this Lambda B, it will be further split in a Boolean sharing among all the servers. For instance, if you have three servers, like the image that I shown before, the Lambda B will have three components, Lambda B one, two, and three. We, if you XOR these three bits, you will get the actual Lambda B. And this MB is another bit, which is available with all the servers. So if you want to recover this bit B, you have to basically XOR these four components, like MB, Lambda B one, two, and three. And since that none of the servers actually have all these four components, it's basically information theoretically secure because they, all they can do is just guess the random bit. Right. And during our protocol, these clients are going to communicate only this MB part of it. And once this communication is happening in this uh, Boolean world, at the server side, what we want to do is something called a mass bit conversion, 
which basically converts this Boolean shares into arithmetic shares. By arithmetic sharing, what I meant is it will be like values over some underlying ring, for instance, a 64 bit ring and all, where if you add up these shares instead of XORing, you will eventually get finally either zero or one itself. So this is a very standard conversion for MB XOR Lambda B to this one. So if you view capital MB as like the bit representation, but just either zero or one, but as a value. And similarly, capital uh, lambda b as the representation of small lambda b as zero and one. You can apply this uh, expression to see that it indeed matches. So for the case, it's zero, zero, this will result in zero. Similarly, zero, one, this will result in one and like that. So it will follow the truth table of XOR. And uh, at the servers, what we employ is uh, some technique which is uh, very popular in the domain of multi-party computation called offline pre-processing. So what we do is, this pre-processing is some setup that we can do even before the inputs are there. So it's in an input independent phase where the servers can basically compute some data to speed up the computation. So when the actual inputs comes, they can use this information that they have computed and stored to actually compute the actual output of the computation. So uh, due to lack of time, I'm not explaining how this quantization works, but believe me, the quantization uh, uh, that we consider is of this following scheme. So if you have a vector of values, what we do is we use a Bernoulli distribution to find two values, which is like the maximum and minimum value. And then using that, we basically convert all the values to either zero or one. Okay, so you can think of like, okay, zero represents the minimum value and one represents the maximum value. So it's basically every element of, let's say like a hundred uh, value, a hundred size vector. So that will eventually be two values, which is like a minimum value and a maximum value and a bit stream, bit stream of hundred bits. That's it. So, and you can basically recover this uh, value here by doing the following. The actual value will be S min plus this delta, which is the bit representation of S max minus S min. This is nothing but saying like, if delta is zero, you will be getting S min. And if delta is one, you will be getting S max. That's it. Now, if you see the second part of this one, it's basically like delta, which is a bit times a value. Like you can think of S max minus S min as a value. So it's delta times a value. And what this SEPAC paper proposes is if you want to aggregate such a stream of values, which are of this form a bit times a value, what we can do is you can do aggregation of each of these separately and then multiply and divide by N. So that's the idea by SEPAC. So we use that in our paper to basically aggregate the second part. So now we split the second part into two components. One is the aggregate of this bits sigma and one is the aggregate of this value S. And in MPC, if you consider the last term, which is the aggregate of this values S, they are very cheap because of this linearity in the secret sharing. Whereas the problematic one is the aggregate of these bits because these bits are actually shared in an XOR fashion among the servers and they want to basically count the sum in the arithmetic domain. So this is an expensive operation, which we will focus next. So in the expression uh, on the top, we are focusing on how to aggregate these bits, which are there. And here I have written, uh, not for three servers, but in general, like for a bit B, which is split into Q shares, it has Q components, B1 to BQ. I can find its equivalent arithmetic value using this generalized ex expression. So this is a generalization of the expression that I have shown earlier. So what you have to do is, you have to view each of these bits BI as a value zero or one in the respective domain, and then apply this formula. So it will have three components. One is basically the sum part, then the second is a middle part we call, and the last one is a product part. So some part is nothing but you just sum all these bits. So if it is a stream of ones, so you will be simply summing them up. And similarly, the last one is a product. So that term will be like uh, two power minus two power Q minus one, only if all the bits are one. In all other cases, that will be zero because that's a product like that. And what we observe is we want to basically have an unbiased uh, aggregation. That means the expected value of this aggregation when we approximate should be same as the expected value of the actual aggregation. And we, what we observed is 
in the expression that I shown earlier, this expected value of the product term is the only one that is depending on this actual bit B. And the costly middle term, it can be replaced with a constant, which corresponds to its expected value. And we cannot actually approximate the last part because that is very essential and it is crucial in determining the actual value. So what we did is, if you remember the last expression, the large one, we retain the first part, which is the sum part, and the last part, which is the product part, and replace the middle term, which is a very nasty expression, with this particular one, which is q minus one mod two minus q by two. So where q is publicly known. So this basically reduces the complexity in computation when I want to evaluate this expression using multiple servers and MPC. So that's the crux of it. Now coming to benchmarking, we uh, implemented it in uh, PyTorch and uh, to give an estimate of how good the approximation is, we do an accuracy evaluation. This is uh, LANET 5 on MNIST dataset. And uh, we have basically considered two kinds of quantization, which is a Hadamard one and a cache in representation. And these green lines here are the accuracies of the exact aggregation. And the blue lines are the ones where we up apply this approximate aggregations. And uh, you can see like after uh, some amount of rounds, this accuracy are going to merge. Okay, not exactly merging, but almost very close. So the gap is very less. Now to see the impact of such an approximation in terms of the inter-server communication, like I said, we have basically three servers in our uh, case where they need to communicate each other for performing this aggregation. So here, this exact column represents the aggregation when they do it in the plain MPC using the standard techniques itself. And the last column of our approximation shows the result of communication after applying this both these approximations. One is the setback approximation followed by the uh, approximate bit conversion. So you can see that, sorry. Uh, if you see the online cost, it's like at least an order of magnitude less. For instance, in the first line itself, first row itself, the online communication is 11.47 uh, MIB, which is now like 0 0.52 MIB because of this approximation. And uh, uh, also, even if you increase the number of parties which are getting selected, the online communication is more or less the same. This is because of the SEPAC approximation that we employ, which makes the online communication of the overall scheme independent of the number of parties. I mean, number of clients that we consider. Now coming to the last section, uh, it is uh, defending against untargeted poisoning defense. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we now consider the case where the corruption is happening from the client side, where the client is basically corrupt and they are sending some bad models to hamper the overall uh, accuracy of the global model. Uh, I would acknowledge that there are like other categories of malicious clients and their activities, but in this work, we just consider the corruption for untargeted poisoning attacks, where the goal is to hamper the overall model accuracy. So we, uh, at a high level, our defense scheme is as follows. It consists of mainly two steps. The first one is an L2 norm based scaling. So what we do is we basically uh, compute the L2 norm of each of these updates, each of these local models. And we see like, okay, whether this is far from the average L2 norm and a F, like a scaled factor of this average L2 norm. If they are above that one, what we are going to do is we will scale them down so that they are somewhere in the range. So this will limit the impact of malicious or like overlooked updates. And then once we have that, then we do a cosine distance based filtering. So we will compute the cosine distance with the average aggregated one and exclude the top K, which basically deviates the most from this average one. So these are the two steps that we did as part of our defense. And uh, this shows the effectiveness of our, so we call our defense as CyanFL Aura. So uh, this shows the effectiveness of our uh, defense. And even before that, basically uh, this uh, attack that we used to study the effect of our defense is min-max attack, which is uh, proposed in SS21. So there, the attack was proposed on a non contest setting. So first thing that we did was, we want to see whether these attacks are valid in a quantized setting itself, where the values are quantized. And to our surprise, they are still valid. And even in some cases, the effect of attack is even more on the quantized updates. 
and then uh, those are basically like uh, the attack only one the blue lines and then we have our attack plus defense where uh, that is this uh, green line and you can see that it our defense scheme improves the accuracy of the uh, scheme so to conclude uh, basically we have now this scheme uh, federated learning scheme with uh, a distributed aggregator setup and it has basically the client has to communicate the same amount of information that it needs to communicate in a privacy free setting as well and then uh, we have very fast aggregation thanks to this uh, sepag and the bit to arithmetic approximation and we also tackle malicious clients by providing a defense scheme so these are the references used in the presentation and 